Okay, and good morning people. Mark Mannering again from Class Training running this session on uh, Word 2007 uh, templates. First up we're going to be looking at uh, what templates are in Word 2007 and what's stored in them. Uh, we'll also look at uh, some ways to uh, look at Word's built-in templates, where they are stored. So the particular templates such as flyers and faxes and so on, where the uh, templates are stored um, on your system and how you can use those templates that Word provides when you install the, uh, the program. We'll look at how to change Word's defaults. So we're talking about the default page size, the font that comes up every time you start a blank document. Um, creating and editing your own templates. Uh, that's the important one we'll be covering a fair bit. So if you have particular needs for things like uh, fax header templates or uh, uh, thank you letters or thank you faxes that go out, you can uh, speed up the time of, or in, in using those by creating your own templates in Word. And uh, we'll also look at then how to uh, automatically use those templates. So there's lots, lots of templates you might have set up. How do we quickly pull them up and without having to look for them manually? So we'll look at, um, when we look at the automatic processes, we'll look at um, what they call macros to load templates. So we're going to be setting up some macros and explaining what macros are and how you can use them to quickly access your particular templates that you've set up uh, that might be going to your clients or customers or whatever it might be. And then once we've got the macros set up, we'll look at how to create buttons on the toolbar uh, or, and also keyboard shortcuts that you can use to quickly pull up those particular um, templates. Okay, just uh, quickly some theory on uh, Word 07 templates. Uh, we're going to be covering what is a template and it's a standard document containing default text and formatting. So um, it also contains macros. So any macros that you create and as I said we'll be explaining those and covering, um, looking at an example of a macro uh, to load the template. So any macros you create are actually stored in the template as well. So you copy the template file to another computer, you also copy the macros that are stored inside that. In Word 2007, the extension has um, a .x, D-O-T-X as the file extension and that stands for document template and then X for 2007 version. So in the older versions of Word, uh, it would have been just D-O-T for document template, but with 2007 and beyond, there's an X added to the extension. And as we'll see, it's always associated with a document. So any template, um, or sorry, any document that you create or open up, there is always a template, whether you like it or not, always a template associated with a particular document. Even a blank template you press by, or you create by going, um, or pressing Control N for new, you get a blank document, nothing on it. There's a template, a default template associated with that. We'll have a look at that um, in the, very soon. A lot of people ask, why should I use templates? Uh, because it's, uh, it speeds up the use of different document types, as it says there. The use of different document types, so as I said, fax headers, memos, reports, and so on. So rather than create the particular fax header from scratch every time, or open up a document, open up a previous fax header that went to somebody, and have to change the name when you save it as a different name, uh, we don't want to have to manually do that. We want to use a template uh, that com comes up, uh, you, you create a new blank document based on that particular template and when you go save or save the particular document it won't override the original template. So as I said before, the template is nice and fresh and not corrupted or changed when you create the next document based on that template. And then obviously to maintain consistency in the formatting. So the template always has the same sort of formatting and uh, document size and page size and page setup and so on, margins as well. So we don't want to have to create that from scratch every time. So think about um, your particular situation. If you're sending out lots of documents that are pretty much the same, again it might be client letters or uh, even invoices that people, some people do in Word, it, might, it would be better to set up templates and you can have um, buttons on your toolbar in Word to click and that opens up the template and away you go. Okay, so here's Microsoft Word 2007, and uh, at the top here, the top of the in the title bar, it says Document One. Document One means it's the first document I've started today, and there's uh, just a blank page. Now, what we want to do first up, we just want to look at um, how we can 
uh, check what template is behind the scenes. So as I said before, with any document you start or create in Word, even a blank document such as this, uh, there's always a template associated with that particular blank document or any document you, you uh, load up. So what I'm going to do is to go to a particular area in Word here and find out what that uh, template is, what the name of the template is, where it's stored and so on. Now in 2007 they've changed it slightly as to where we go and what we need to do first up to look where that um, template is or what, what type of template or the name of the template, we need to add another tab in the ribbon here. So as you know you've got home, insert, page layout, references and so on. And there's another tab that we can activate or turn on in Word and that tab is called the developer tab. So I'll just type this in here so you can see it, developer tab. So the developer tab that uh, we can add or activate in Word has other functions on it to do with templates and macros and so on. And uh, it gives us a shortcut to see what the particular template is behind the scenes. Okay, so to show that developer tab, we need to go to the office button, top left hand corner here, office button, come down to word options, word options, and on the popular uh, tab here, or popular section, there's a checkbox here which says show developer tab in the ribbon. And I'm not too sure why they don't leave that turned on by default, but by default this, this is turned off. So if you want to show that, you need to tick that obviously. So click that, show the developer tab in the ribbon, bottom right corner, just click OK. And that gives me a brand new tab up the top here, which wasn't there before, called the developer tab. So if I click on that, developer tab, I now have lots of uh, extra functions to do with uh, recording macros and so on. And we'll come back to some of that a little bit later on. Uh, the design mode in the control section here allows me to set up forms. Uh, I can add forms and check boxes and drop downs and so on to my Word documents. But the one I need is the far right hand side here called document template. So the document template icon here on the right just allows me to see what the template is behind the scenes. So I'll click that, just click that. And the document template showing here is what's called normal. So there is a file on my uh, hard drive, on, on everybody's hard drive, uh, called the normal dot dotx template, and at the moment we don't see the extension .dotx. So the document template in behind this particular document here, which is document one, uh, just a blank document as we said, it has a template already associated with it called normal.dotx. Now if I wanted to double check where that template is situated, this particular one here, we just go to the attach button on the far right, attach even though we're not going to attach anything else, go to the attach button, and it shows me here that I've got um, normal dot, uh, dot, uh, dot dotm for macro and so on. So this is the folder on my uh, PC or laptop where the particular templates are stored, my default templates. So the ones I use or create, you can see I've already created one here called Mark's header or Mark's fax header. We'll do that a little bit later. At the top here it says uh, Microsoft templates. It tells me where the particular templates are stored. I don't need to worry about actually where that is normally, so just to know that it's there and this is where we're going to save our particular templates that we're going to use. I'll just cancel that and cancel that. Okay, so if I go Control N on the keyboard, just like I did then, that creates a brand new document, it's called Document 2, up the top uh, in the title bar here. It's a blank document, only one page, but again I can check the template behind the scenes just by going to developer, there's document template, click that and again it says it's the normal template. So there's a file called normal.dotx on the computer, just cancel that. Now as most of you should know, we want to make a shortcut for this particular button. I don't want to have to go to the developer tab all the time and go to this particular button. So I'm going to make a shortcut for this button on the quick access toolbar here. Which has uh, got a smiley face there and so on. Just by right clicking the button here, right click, add the quick access toolbar, and now that's added the shortcut button there, it says document template. So now I can be on any tab, doesn't matter what tab I'm on, home tab for example, and I can go to that button, document template. Just makes it quicker to access. Other templates that you can get to, so for example, Word, other Word templates. 
that are already supplied for us when we install Word. So if I go to the Office button, I just go to Office here, and we click New, like that, and a whole new dialog box pops up with templates, blank and recent, installed templates, my templates will come back to, and featured. So Microsoft Online, these are on Microsoft's website. So if I go to say I want uh, award certificates or a brochure or business cards, calendars. So Word provides a lot of uh, built-in templates for you if you've got your own or running your own business or working in an office there. It might be um, quicker to look at the built-in things that Word provides rather than you trying to create them from scratch. So for example, um, a flyer. So let's go to flyer, click there and it's actually accessing the Microsoft website, there's banners, event flyers, marketing flyers, we'll click that one and again it's going to download and there's general consulting flyer and so on, flyer, health, modern, whatever it might be. So these are templates built in, we click uh, that one we want and we click download bottom right and it's actually downloading it permanently on my laptop. I'll just go back to zoom here, we go to whole page so we can see the template and it's just got basic, it's a one page document. Okay, so this is a blank document, or well, blank in inverted commas, up the top it says document 3. It doesn't say anything about uh, the name of the file or whatever, so this is a new document based on that particular template and this document or template obviously has lots of pictures on it and text already uh, built in. Now again, to double check what template is behind the scenes, I click that button that says document template. Now this time I'm pretty sure it won't say normal. So we'll click that and there's the name of the uh, template. It's called in underscore general consulting flyer dot dotx. Okay, so same sort of thing as before. Uh, the previous template said normal but we didn't see the uh, extension, but here's the extension showing now, DOTX for document template. It also tells you, if I just move along here, hit the home key on the keyboard, it tells you where it's stored now, it's been permanently stored on my laptop under Mark and so on. And that's a new template, oh sorry, a new document based on that template, click OK. If I go and click on save over here, top left hand corner, just to pre just pretend I've changed the template to my own particular business and I'm going to save this document because I'm going to send this off to the printer. So I go save and it comes up and asks me for the name, document 3, and I can just type in my flyer if I know how to spell and save that. So I haven't changed the original template and I can click in here and click in there and change things, uh, my business flyer. Okay, for September 2011. Alright, so this is my particular flyer. Go okay, Control S and it's changed the uh, document, but it hasn't changed the original template. If I wanted to change the colours, I could change colours or put a new photograph in or whatever. Next month or whatever it might be, I want uh, to create a new flyer. So I go Office, New, and it's going to come up there. There's my recently used templates. General Consulting Flyers, it's now on my computer, click that one and go Create and it's downloading it again but I could have gone to my particular copy on the laptop which would be the same and this should come up now as a, f a fresh new example, so Consulting with Results. So those changes I did for the previous document haven't been saved to the template, I now have a brand new fresh document. So we'll come back and look at how we can create our own in a sec. I'll just go click and close here and that's the original document, or the one I just saved. Okay, now part of uh, exercise one looks at how to change the defaults for your particular document. So anytime you press Control N for new, just like that, I've got document five there now, it comes up with um, the default calibre body in the top right left hand corner here. So an example of default settings is the font that always comes up, calibre body 11 points. And a lot of people say, I don't like that, I don't like Calibri body, whatever it is. So they either change it here for this particular document or they go into the font dialog box here, we go font and we say, I always like it to be Arial 12 points, for example. So I'll scroll down here, now, a lot of you have done this before but we'll just see something happening in a minute, 11 and, oh sorry, Arial and 12 points we want, click OK. And you can see at the top of it now says Arial 12 and I say this is 
text and it in fact is in Arial 12. Now even if I save this, I'll just save this document, leave it as um, this is text. And we say right and uh, we'll close that down, Arial 12, top left hand corner. As soon as I press Control N though for new, it goes back to the default Calibri, whatever it is, 11 points and so on. So there must be built in there somewhere a default that says every time you start a blank document or start Word, you get this Calibri 11 points. And we went into the font dialog box button here, we tried to change it, but we'll have to do this every time. So we want to change the default uh, for our particular needs to Arial 12, for example. Now the way we do that is to go back to the font dialog box. So we go back to the font dialog box button here. We change it as we did before. So we'll go into Arial and 12. Now before we click OK though, which is what we did before, we need to go bottom left here, it says default. So the default button here, click on, and it says you are about to change the default fault, the default font. <laughs> I'll say that again. Not the default fault, we want to change the default font. So I'll get that right. Uh, it says do you want to change this, uh, do you want to make this change to all documents based on the normal template? We say yes we do. And it's into Arial 12 points. Now even if I manually change it here, so I go back to the font and say well just for this particular time, Arial Black 18, whatever. Okay, there's Arial Black 18. As soon as I go Control N for New, it goes to my new default, which is Arial 12 points, top left hand corner. So if you want something else, Times New Roman, whatever it might be, you go to your dialog box and then hit that default button. Same with paragraph uh, spacing, same with uh, new page sizes and margins. If I go to page layout and go to the page setup dialog box here, I can set my default margins. I want it always to be uh, four and a half centimeters top margin, so my letterhead fits in for example, and so on. So I always want it to be 4.5 uh, centimeters. Once I make the change though, there's a default button, bottom left. So default, click that, are you sure? Yes. And now it will always be that top margin, you can see there. So if I go control N, there's a brand new document with that same top margin default now. Page layout, page setup, and it says 4.5, I don't need to change it. The same with paragraph as well. So if I go to the paragraph section here, it always has a large spacing after of 10 points. So if I say, well, I don't want that, I want it to be zero all the time and make it single line spacing. There's default here. So the same sort of thing and it will be, it will remember that for next time. We won't worry about that for the time being. Page setup. Now, again, I can manually change it just for this particular document to 2.5 centimeters or whatever and click OK. So it's back to a, a small or a smaller uh, top margin. As soon as I go Control N though, it comes up with a higher default uh, page setup again for the top margin. So it's very handy to be able to change the defaults and then if you want them back to the set um, standard default, you just change it manually and hit that default button. Let's have a look at um, how we can create, create our own templates, just type it in there so you can see what's happening. So we're going to create our own templates and then look at how we can call them up quickly. Now to create your own templates is just a simple matter and let's, um, we won't uh, exit out of Word but we can just start with a blank document. I've got document 8 at the top there but it could be anything, a blank document or you might open up an existing document that's already set up more or less for your particular, I don't know, fax header or flyers or whatever it might be. But I'll start with a blank document and we're going to make a fax header. Uh, we'll just call it, uh, I won't do too much work here. A fax transmission header, and we'll center that. So we're just all we need to do is set up our particular document as we normally do. So now to set up a little fax header, a little hint here, I'm just going to use a little table. So insert a table for the top part of the fax header. So for example, who it's going to, who it's from, uh, the subject of the fax, and how many pages. Okay, and then click there, and we'll just say the message like that and that's where we type in the message. Okay, now to make that look a little bit better, let's just drag this back. So keep in mind to try and use tables as much as you can to set up a, a nice layout. Uh, to, from, subject and so on, I'm going to make that uh, bold, all of those. 
off to the right. Okay, and then a bit of spacing. Now we don't just press enter and sign. I don't, I don't go here and press enter, then click there again and press enter again because I want more space. Okay, now that takes too much bucking around. What we want to do is put some spacing. So one way to do that is to highlight all parts of the table. Go into the paragraph section here and go six points before and after. Click OK and it puts in the spacing for me. So nice and tidy. That heading there, we'll just put make it uh, a little bit bigger. The fax transmission and so on. And obviously I'll put my letterhead and so on. But that'll do. I've got my basic uh, document uh, ready and I'm going to save this as a template. Now to save it as a template, we just go to save. We just say uh, save or save as, doesn't matter. I've got the save button here, control S or click here and go save or save as, doesn't matter what you do. But you can go uh, save as Word template straight away. So office button and save as a Word template. Okay, so you could use that just to save a little bit of time. Otherwise, if I just go save, click on the save button here, it comes up and says uh, it's going to be saved as a Word document here, DOCX, which is not what I want. So I click the drop down here and it comes up and says Word template. So I need to save it as a Word template. It's another way to do it. Now when I go Word template, it just remembers what folder I was on, in this case the desktop folder. Now I don't want to save it in the desktop folder. So what I need to do is go to uh, templates on the far left here. So if I click on templates, it then goes to my original or default templates folder. So I just need to uh, look for that and uh, saves me having to manually navigate to where the templates are stored uh, normally in my laptop. If you're using Windows XP instead of Windows 7, you'll see trusted templates top left hand corner uh, as a folder of the dialog box to save the document. So if you're using Windows XP, just have uh, or look for a folder top left saying trusted templates, same thing. So there's fax uh, transmission, so that'll do. I'll, I'll call this um, my new fax transmission template or put the word in if you wanted to. We'll leave that as it is and go save. Okay, now this is not a document now. This is not a document, this is a template. So um, at the top in the title bar here it says my new fax transmission dot dotx. So this is not the document we're looking at, this is the actual template we are looking at, uh, similar to the analogy I used earlier, the plastic shape we buy from the news agency or whatever. Uh, this is the actual plastic shape we're looking at. The, the particular template. Okay, so to use this template now to actually create a document based on this template, I'll just close this down. We say uh, Office button and close, and I start up my Word, and I say right, I'm going to use that template now. We go click and new like we did before. Click and new, and it comes up blank and recent installed templates. My templates. So if I click my templates, I should then see uh, a preview or a list, there's the one I just did, my new fax transmission uh, template. So all I do is double click that and up comes the contents of what it had before. Now that looks exactly the same as the template itself but this time if you look in the title bar it says document 10. So this is a brand new blank in inverted commas, blank, a brand new document based on that particular template I just created. Fax transmission and so on. Now I wanted to double check that the right template was there, I go to this button we put there before, which is called Document Template, as we said. Click on that, and it now says that the template is my new fax transmission .dotx, and it's on that particular folder there where the default templates are stored. Okay, so I've created my own template, and just by the way, this dialog box here, you might have other templates uh, loaded in, which we don't in this case, but other templates might become loaded automatically. Uh, for your particular um, setup of Word. And the main template though that's feeding in the default template is this one at the top here. Uh, feeding in the particular uh, content. I'll just go cancel here. So I would click here, here's my uh, template, it's going to Fred and it's obviously from me, the subject was uh, the quote I sent, there's only one page and Barney what or Fred what did you think? and I print this off and away again. If I wanted to save this, I just go Control S and I call it Fax to Fred. And on my desktop or on my 
documents, whatever it might be, fax to Fred, save that. Because I wanted to save a, a copy of the fax I sent to Fred. Now to do another fax uh, header, I just go click top left hand corner, office button, new again, and recently used templates is here, so it's already, already there, so it saves a bit of time in getting to it. Double click that. Double click and it comes up again, top left or top in the title bar, uh, document 11, and I've got a fresh, brand new document based on that template. So the previously saved document didn't come back, the one I sent to Fred, for example. So a lot of people do that, though. They call up the previous one. So fax to Fred, they say, right, I've got to send this to Barney now. So they call up the old document, get rid of the information that's there. So they've got to do that. That takes a bit of time. And to type in the new thing, going to someone else, then they've got to give it a new name, save as and so on. So to prevent all of those uh, steps and possible mistakes, we create the template and every time we use it, it comes back all nice and fresh. I'll just go to Control F4 and close that down. Okay, what if we wanted to change the template? You wanted to change the original template, something about the uh, formatting, uh, you didn't like, you forgot to put your header in there or uh, automatic date. If we wanted to make some changes to the formatting content, whatever, of that original template, we'd have to call it up. We'd have to go up here and say open, open and open what? I want to open, uh, not Word documents on the right hand side here, I want to open up Word templates. When it comes up and shows me Word templates there. So I'll open up Word templates and go to the particular folder where the templates are stored. So templates here, and I need to open up directly that particular template to make changes. So you can't create a document based on that template, make the changes and save it back to the template, it won't allow you to do it. We have to open up the template directly. Okay, so rather than uh, going through this long-winded process, because I've recently used that, that particular template or had it saved and opened, I can go to the Office button here, and in my recent documents, uh, there it is there my new fax transmission .dotx. So whatever way you open up the template, you need to open up the template directly, not the fax that we sent to Fred or whatever it might be. So click there, and there's my uh, template, and we can see top in the uh, sorry in the, in the top of the uh, title bar here, it says my new fax transmission .dotx. So this is the actual template. Now, by the way, to double check, if I went to the button now which says, show me the document template behind the scenes, um, you might think to yourself, well, what would that show? Because we're actually looking at the template itself. This is the behind the scenes template. This is the plastic shape, whatever it might be. So it's not a document based on the template, it's the actual template itself. So if I click that document template button here, you can see straight away that this is blank. It's empty. Uh, it doesn't tell us that particular name. It doesn't tell us what template is associated with this document because we're looking at the template now. So this is the template. So there's no, it's telling us, well, there's no template associated with this template because it is the template we're looking at. So hopefully everyone out there is totally confused. But let's just emphasize the fact that we've got the template now that we're opening up to make some changes. So if I said I wanted to make some changes to the formatting, I just I might uh, click the heading here and change it to a blue a nice um, blue color. Uh, we might get rid of the lines here. So if I click anywhere uh, and we'll go to borders and shading, we'll say I don't want lines there. I just want horizontal lines. Just to make it look a little bit um, more professional, make that uh, bold, control B, make it a bit larger, and so on. Okay, maybe the date. We forgot to put the date in there. So I'll click here and we'll say insert the date and time, which is over here on my small screen resolution, insert date and time. And we want that to be updated automatically, so I'll just say uh, update automatically, click OK, and it comes up, and we'll make that centered just with Control E on the keyboard, Control E for centered. OK, so this is my template, and as you probably know, with a date, if I click in there, it goes grey, and it says update, telling me that it's an automatic date. So tomorrow, if I use this um, template, this fax template, it'll come up and say the 27th. OK, and we just save it. Save, top left-hand corner, we'll just close it down. 
and we'll create a new document based on that template now. So we're ready to do another fax going out to someone. So we'll click there, we'll say new, and recently used, there it is again, and just double click. And now we've got a new blank template, document 12, it says top of the screen in the title bar, document 12, but the new um, formatting has come back. Okay, and then we just fill it in who it's going to and so on, which I won't worry about. Okay, now we could stop it at that point, but a lot of people are going to say, well, what if you had lots of templates? What if you had your facts and your flyers and your client letters and so on? It takes a bit of time to get to them. We've got to go up the top left-hand corner. We've got to go Office button, New, and find where the template is each time we want to create a document based on that template. So we're going to speed that process up and make it a lot easier to access your templates. And what we're going to be doing eventually is to have some buttons on the quick access toolbar here. So I've already got some other buttons there. But I'm going to add some more buttons across here in the space which will allow me to load up templates a lot more quickly. Okay, now the way we do that is to create what we call a macro. Okay, the macro, I'll just zoom in here so we can see it. So the macro, what the macro will do is to load the template. Not load he template, but load the template. So it will load the template to make it a lot easier for us to uh, use. And then go back to the start and the button on the quick access toolbar will actually load the macro. So there's the sort of workflow. We're going to have a button on the toolbar and that button on the toolbar, when I click on it, will run a macro, which is an automatic process and that macro will actually open up a new document, it will create a new document based on the particular template we want. So we'll have a button for each template. So if I've got three or four templates I've created I use a lot, I'm going to have three or four buttons to load each one, to open up each one. So we have to work backwards now. We work out what the workflow is, so that's how it's going to work, but we've worked backwards. So we've already created the template here, uh, part one if you like. We're going to create the macro next and we'll have a, a button on the quick access toolbar for that. Okay, let's just press Control F4, which uh, is a quick shortcut to close the document down. I'll hit the N key on the keyboard. We'll just close down all these documents just to make sure we've got um, some clean things going as well. And that's the last one, I think. Control N. We don't need to have a blank document there, but we will. Okay, now to look at how to create a, a macro. It's up under the View tab. If we go to View tab here, and there's a button on the far right that says Macros, because we want to view the macros. So if I click the drop down there, I can start recording a macro. So we'll come back in a minute to see what a macro is. I'll explain that very simply soon. On the Developer tab as well, the Developer tab has a shortcut for going straight to record a macro, so you could use that as well. And in fact, the bottom left corner, of the status bar, there's also a shortcut button to uh, click and that will immediately start the recording of a macro. So uh, a macro, what is it, just um, quickly, macro, it's a series of steps. We record to play back. That's in its simplest form. So a series of steps that we carry out to do whatever in Word, to format something, to cut and paste, to print, and in our example today, to open up a template, to create a new document based on that template. There's a series of steps to do that manually. And what we're going to do is to record those steps to create a document based on the template. And then we can play those steps back very quickly and a lot more quickly than what we actually do it. So the Word um, application does the work for us. So I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so we're going to record a macro, and give, we'll, we'll give it a name. We, we actually set a name up for the macro, depending on the particular template we want. So uh, it makes sense to name the macro pretty much the same as the template we've got here. So if I go down to, we'll just use a shortcut button bottom left, so this is uh, recording a macro. So we click that, and it comes up and says we're about to record a macro. Just put that in the middle there. So what's the name of the macro? Well, I'll call it Load Facts Template. Load Facts Template. You notice the way I typed it in, uh, you can't have or you're not allowed to have spaces in the name of the macro. And if you do, 
word will um, remind you that you can't have spaces. I've also used capital letters, L for load, F for fax, T for template, just to make it easier to read uh, the particular uh, word or name. So that's the name of my um, macro. Now at this point I could put a button on the quick access toolbar before I start recording it, but I'll do that later. And at this point I can make a keyboard shortcut to actually run the macro which loads a template. So we're going to do that. I'll go click on keyboard shortcut and the, uh, the um, shortcut key again would be something that um, makes sense. So this is going to load a fax template, F for fax. So my little system is to use control shift. So I'm holding down control and shift now and press the letter F and control shift and F which is normally used for the font dialog box in uh, Word. I'm going to override that font dialog box and make up my own keyboard shortcut, in this case control shift F and that's going to eventually load up that fax template for me. So control shift F, the shortcut key will run the macro which then loads in the template. I've got to create that macro first though. So we say assign that, click close and you can see now on the mouse, on the little mouse there, a little cassette icon or picture which just indicates that we're recording now. We're actually recording uh, the steps that we're going to be going through. Now what Word doesn't do is just record me moving a mouse around like that. I've got to click something or use a keyboard shortcut, whatever it might be, to actually do something. Now when I'm ready to stop recording once I've finished the macro, bottom left here, there's a button that says uh, I click that button to stop the recording. So it's like a little stop button, little blue square to say when I'm ready I will um, click that to stop the recording. So recording the steps now, I'll just go through the steps to open up or create a document based on that template. So I click there and go new. I can go to recently used templates but I like to go to the template directly just in case it's not there next time under recently used when the macro runs back. So I'll go to templates there and there's the one I want, my new fax transmission and click OK and that's the only step I want to make or the steps I should say, they're the only steps I want to record and I now go down to here and say stop recording and it goes back to the create a new macro button. And that's it, that's all I've got to do is, is um, record those particular steps. Again at the top here it says document 14. Document 14, so it's the 14th document I've opened up this session. Now if I just close this down, I'm going to check that now, let's check that that uh, macro works. I'll close it down and say no. Now the little keyboard shortcut was Control Shift F. Control Shift and F, so I hold in Control Shift, which I'm doing now, press the letter F, bang, straight away up comes that particular template uh, or a new document based on the template and it says now document 15 in the top of the screen here. So if I exit out of Word, I'll just exit out and on the top right hand corner here, exit, say no, I don't want to save this and it's gone straight to there and I'll start up uh, Word again. Okay, now I'm ready, it says document 1 at the top there, I'm ready to do a new fax to somebody. Notice how the default page margin came in. If I just go Control Shift F on my keyboard, up it comes straight away, a lot quicker than me having to go up to the office button and try and find that particular template. Alright, so that's using the keyboard shortcut to run the macro which is now opening up the template. Now again, if you've got lots of templates, you're not going to be able to re remember possibly lots of keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to add a quick access toolbar button. So a little button at the top here to um, uh, actually load this particular template. Okay, I'll just press Control F4, Control F4 which closes down that document again just to clean it up. Alright, now to add a quick access toolbar button, we just go to any button in the ribbon here, it doesn't matter where or onto the quick access toolbar, it doesn't matter where, we right click and we go to customize quick access toolbar. Customize quick access toolbar, which is where you've probably been before. We click here in the category section, choose commands from. So choose commands from macros. So it's already got a list there for macros. I click macros and I've got lots of macros already set up somewhere, but there's the one I just did. Uh, normal dot new macros dot load fax template. That's the name I, I threw in. Okay, so we go click and we say add that to the right. And there it is there. There's the button and that's how it's going to look 
by the way, on the quick access toolbar, it looks like this little icon here, little transformers icon, where it might be, and the name here, uh, which we can change, this is the actual label. At the moment it says normal dot new macros dot load facts template. So that's the label that will appear when we point to the button on the quick access toolbar. We don't like that, we're going to change that, so I can just go modify here, and also you mightn't like the little picture that comes up. So this is uh, where we can go by clicking modify. We've got a whole series of built-in little icons I can use to um, change or have that icon uh, be rep represented by. So I don't know, where do we go? There's a whole stack of things now. Make sure you don't spend all day, people, thinking, well, what icon will I use? There's a smiley face, there's a, a little key and so on. So do something or use something that's sort of relevant to the particular document. There's um, a little icon there, looks like a, a notepad. We'll just use that. And display name. I can change this now. Just get rid of all that and delete. This is not changing the name of the template or the name of the macro. It's actually just changing the label that will show up when I point to it, in this case, load facts template. So there's the icon there, it looks like a little notepad uh, and facts template. I don't know, let's make it consistent with capital T's, you don't have to, and click OK. And that's how it's going to look now. Click OK again. OK, so there's my icon there, the last one. If I point to it, it says load facts template, and I click that and bang, up it comes. So a lot quicker than me trying to muck around and uh, open up templates and so on. And obviously if I exit out of Word, I'll just exit out and go back into Word. So next day I'll come in, Office Word, and there's my template, ready to send a fax off, click and away we go. Now just to have a look at, um, just a quick review of macros and uh, templates as such. Let's look at doing another example. If I go to uh, Office and New, we'll just see the general consulting flyer. Let's just um, say, well, I want to use that. But that. Again, that's going to download off Microsoft. So I might just go to My Templates here, and you can see it's been permanently downloaded, the general consulting flyer, whatever it's called. Double click that, and it's not downloading it, it's actually just loaded it off my computer. So let's do a, uh, a macro to open up that consulting flyer, control F4 again to get rid of that. Let's open up uh, or create a macro which will load that particular um, flyer template. We'll put a button on the toolbar again and customise the button to make it look the way we want. So again we go down to bottom left corner here it says record a macro. Click on that and the macro name, this time I'm going to say load or open, doesn't matter what you put in there, load the flyer uh, template. Uh, I won't worry about a keyboard shortcut because I can't think of anything else and I could do a button now but I'll go, come back to it. Click OK. There's a little cassette recorder again, so we go up, we start recording, we go click and new. Uh, again I go to my templates, this one here, OK, click OK and it comes up looking like that. Now something extra I could do is to say, well it's in zoomed up close. I don't want to do that, I want to be able to zoom right back instead of me having to do it manually. So we go down here, bottom right, and this is all being recorded, don't forget. Click there and we say, right, let's go to whole page, click OK. And we get the whole page coming up straight away. All right, and that'll do, we stop the macro. Control F4 to close it down. And we want to again put a button for the macro up on the quick access toolbar. So again we go right click, customize quick access toolbar, drop down here, go to macros, and there we go. It's got normal.newmacros.load flyer template. Now just by the way, Word has obviously added the extra um, sections there to the name of the macro. I typed in load flyer template, but Word adds in normal.newmacros. Now the normal at the start there indicates that these macros are stored in the normal dot template. So the one we saw right at the start of the session uh, where we went to attach or show me the document templating behind the scenes, the normal dot template always gets loaded when we, we open up Word. So these, these macros are stored in that normal dot template. So we'll click there, we go add, 
and again we say right uh, there's I uh, don't like that particular little icon or the label click there now you might use a different um, icon doesn't matter what you use smiley face but maybe for templates you could use the same type of icon which you can do and change this to say load flyer template so you can sort of group them together all of the buttons that are loading up or opening up templates you can have the same sort of icon and just have the label indicating what it's doing click OK so there's the two examples click OK again and now we've got in the quick access toolbar two icons that one says load fax template this one says load the flyer template now don't forget that second one there load the flyer template is um, creating a document based on that flyer template but then it's zooming back to the whole uh, view of the page so it's doing something extra so the macro is recording those steps and playing them back for us okay so we'll do that I'll just click on uh, load flyer template and you can see bang it's gone straight I always say bang because it's quick <laughs> hopefully and uh, it's it's brought up the um, the whole view of the page as well not just zoomed in like we saw before so we change our template and away we go and we want to do another one just click that button again someone races into the office and says quick we've got to send a fax off to Barney so I go right no problem click on the load fax template button there it is there and we go Barney and it's from me again uh, whatever is the subject three pages and here it is Barney control s to save it we go to desktop we say right I need to save this fax to Barney and press enter and I've saved it to Barney I need to send another fax off to uh, Fred so I hit that button here load the fax template button and away we go very quick so I can really speed up my management my workflow the mundane things that I've got to get documents out to and back from and so on and uh, you can imagine having lots of buttons across the top here looking at or setting up lots of templates uh, for um, your particular needs okay now just out of interest uh, the macro something uh, which is um, extra uh, as far as the macros are concerned how I can delete uh, macros I can delete the buttons very simple to delete the button any button you can just go up here in the, in the quick access toolbar right click and say remove the quick access toolbar which I won't do but that's just removing the button it's not deleting the macro as well so if the macro wasn't working or got corrupted or whatever it might be we can go up and, and actually delete the macro so we can start again we can also look at the editing or coding behind the scenes as far as the macro is concerned so to do that we go up to the view tab again and we go to macros here and you get the drop down there's where I can record macros or view macros so if I click that view macros up comes a list of macros I've got stored in the normal dot template or the currently opened documents I'll just go um, cancel that to that we can also just click the top button the top half of the button here to come up with macros so uh, if any of these macros were uh, corrupted or weren't working you can just click on the particular name and go delete I want to delete that particular macro so I click delete it says are you sure uh, no I want to do it in this case and it tidies it up and it would disappear so I'll click no you can also look at the coding behind the scenes so if I click on the particular uh, name and then go to edit now we'll see behind the scenes here as we call it behind the scenes all of the macros and the coding for those particular macros uh, in the visual basic window here and there's the one I was looking at it says load fax template and there's the code that was being recorded as I recorded the macro so I, I obviously didn't type all this in but um, this is being built up and created as we create the macro as we record the macro um, anything in green starting with apostrophe is just comments so that just tells me what the name of the macro is load fax template and you can see the command is fairly straightforward it says documents dot add the template equals what and there's the location of it and it's going off to the side here so my new fax template dot dotx and again you can see where the location is document type zero and so on so what you could do is actually copy and paste that um, you've got to be careful with uh, changing commands and code and so on but obviously the one down here which is the 
flyer template would be the same, very similar, uh, except it's loading a different template name. And also you've got the added uh, ability to go zoom to fit the whole page, active window and so on. So I did that extra with that particular uh, flyer template. Now, in fact, well, I could do something extra for you without any extra charge to people out there. I could say, well, what about the fax template? It didn't go to a whole uh, zoom or whole view of the page. Can I add that to it? Well, yes, we can. All we need to do is copy and paste. We know that this particular section here is zooming to the full page. So I can just right click, copy that, click at the end of the previous load the fax macro, press enter and control V or right click and paste that in and we might just uh, line that up a bit, we don't have to do that just to make it look better. So what I've done is manually change the macro a little bit to add the code in. I didn't know what that particular code was so I just grabbed it from the one at the bottom, copied and pasted it in but you can certainly recognise that it relates to going to a, a whole page view or the full page view. For this, in this case, for the fax template. Okay, so if I hit the red X button in the top right hand corner just to exit out, okay, it doesn't ask me to save it because it's automatically being saved. I'll just go to Control F4 to close this down, and that one don't have to just to tidy it up. So if we go now to this particular button, load the fax template, keeping in mind it's got that extra command in there now, should go to full page view after it's loaded loaded in the fax template, and there it goes. So it did it for me and read in that particular command. Now in this case it might not be the way we want it to happen because we can't see, now we'd have to zoom in so we can start typing, but it just shows you what you can do with macros, cutting or copying and pasting from other macros into the particular one to adjust it and so on. Review word templates, as I said templates can save you lots of time and can maintain a nice consistency in your particular uh, documents. Uh, plan the content and formatting of your templates. Now again, you might have previous documents there already set up. So if those documents are there, you can just copy and paste or, or convert those into a template if they're okay, just by going save as a template. So you've already converted that document into a template. Consider using macros. Well, I wouldn't even consider using macros. I definitely would do them and uh, set them up so they can be a lot quicker to load in the templates uh, with the associated buttons or keyboard shortcuts. And obviously keep in mind, I probably didn't um, emphasise it enough that um, the way I've used macros in this session is only one example of what macros can do. I've used macros to just load up a template or create a document based on a template. So macros can be used to do other things, formatting, printing to particular pages and whatever it might be. So anything where you're doing lots of steps manually all the time, that's usually a good contender for setting up those steps as a macro to do quick things uh, rather than manually going through the steps. Uh, those of you in a more a corporate organisation or a big organisation, big business, uh, you can have these templates and the macros associated with them on a shared drive. So everybody can get to the one particular template for the fax header or the the particular invoicing system, whatever it might be, and that uh, is what happens in a lot of organisations. They have them centrally shared on the S drive or the G drive or whatever it might be, and you only need to have one copy of each template and people can access those from their workstations. Uh, we always, always suggest having a person who uh, looks after uh, maintenance and management of templates, so that the so-called champion uh, who looks after uh, the formatting and where they're situated and where they're managed and located and so on. Uh, that's something to think about for you out there in bigger businesses. Okay, uh, finally, thank you as always. That's uh, my name and email address at the top there if you need to send me any uh, emails. Mark Mannering signing off. Thanks a lot. Bye.